My name is Morgan Ivins Duran. I'm an environmental scientist working for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife in the Monterey office. And as I mentioned when we did introductions, I have over seven years of state service, the last five of which have been as a range CES. And my name is Kathleen or Kat Hicks. I'm also an environmental scientist and I've been working in the Central Coast Office of the Regional Water Quality Control Boards for four and a half years um, as an ES. Uh, next slide. I grew up in Los Angeles and I spent a lot of time growing up by the ocean, both in Southern California, as well as up here in Monterey. That passion for the ocean eventually led me to graduate school where I studied fisheries management and policy. After getting my master's, I, evalu I evaluated my options and considered pursuing a career in academia, in private industry, or in the environmental nonprofit world. But I ultimately opted to pursue a career in state service. By joining CDFW, I saw an opportunity to use my scientific training and expertise to support and improve management of our coastal and marine resources for the benefit of all Californians. Next, please. Um, I also grew up in California um, on the Central Coast. Um, I got outside a lot, um, appreciating the recreation and learning opportunities that natural resources offered. After my undergrad, I worked in waste management and marine aquaculture in the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. I realized that I didn't have the tools to assess the impacts of human activities on sensitive environments. So in grad school, I studied applied marine and watershed science. I studied the impacts of both poor water resource management and habitat restoration. And I realized that a way to use my expertise to benefit these resources was to work with the water boards and their mission to protect water quality. Next slide, please. As I said, I work in the Central Coast Water Board. Our region spans from Southern Santa Clara County to Northern Ventura and our office is located in the city of San Luis Obispo. Next, please. So where do environmental scientists or ESs work at the water board? In units in the Central Coast um, that have scientists, we make up more than 60% of the staff of those units. And the unit that I work in is actually 100% environmental scientists. Um, the units that have environmental scientists are basin planning, irrigated lands, 401, 401 dredge and fill, stormwater, cannabis, grants, non-point source, and the regional monitoring program. We also have three environmental scientist specialists, and all that is to say is that we have key roles in important areas of environmental protection. Next, please. Within the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, employees in the marine region where I work have a particularly challenging time with cost of living. Due to the nature of our work and the location of our offices, we almost always need to live in high cost coastal areas. And on the slide here, you can see the locations of those main marine region offices. As a specific example, when I was first offered my job at CDFW, I had the choice of three office locations, Belmont, which has now moved to San Carlos, Santa Cruz, and Monterey, and none of those locations were affordable on an ES salary. When I first started at CDFW as a Range B environmental scientist, I was spending over half, 53% of my take-home income on rent every month, and those prices have only increased over the last seven years. This is well above the general recommendation of spending 30% of your salary on living expenses. Without some very generous financial support from my family, I would still be renting and likely seeing my rent increase every six to 12 months, which is standard in the Monterey area. And even now with a fixed rate mortgage on a small condominium, I am still spending around 40% of my take home income on housing costs every month. Next slide, please. The gap between state service pay for environmental scientists and costs of living, whether it is renting, obtaining a mortgage, or making a monthly mortgage payment, makes it challenging to recruit and retain qualified staff 
especially as costs of living continue to increase. The median environmental scientist salary is just under $84,000 a year or $7,000 a month. And um, as an example, for three cities where Marine Region has quite a few environmental scientist staff, Santa Rosa, Monterey, and San Diego, you can see that those monthly mortgage payments would equate to over 60% of that mean gross environmental scientist salary. There is a big gap here between what environmental scientists are making and what they need to be able to make in order to save enough for a down payment on a home and make those monthly payments or to afford a reasonable quality of life as a renter in the cities where they work. Next slide, please. San Luis Obispo County also experiences this gap. The median, median single family home price increasing all the time. Um, and we can compare the $370 in monthly costs for that to that median, um, the average environmental scientist salary of about 7,000 per month. San Luis Obispo is also um, the third least affordable county in California based on the percent of households available to purchase a single family home and renters face similar housing cost burdens. San Luis Obispo is a county that was not included for GeoPay and the tentative agreement that was rejected. Next, please. Environmental scientists in San Luis Obispo County have expressed frustrations about affordability of living in California on um, the environmental scientist salary. In April 2022, 11 environmental scientists, which is more than half of our 19 scientists in the Central Coast Office of the Water Board, signed a letter that was shared during bargaining about the hardships um, from cost of living in San Luis Obispo County. About three quarters of the staff signatures were from staff with less than 10 years of service and about a quarter were those who had 20 or more years of service. All of our region's environmental scientist specialists were also among those who signed the letter, which indicates that the hardships from cost of living are being felt by um, newer staff all the way to those with the most expertise in our office. And I can say this leads to actual consequences as multiple staff have left our office explicitly citing the local cost of living, including one of the signers of the April letter who left for a federal position. Next, please. We can further expand on the impacts of not having broader GeoPay and why our bargaining unit rejected the tentative agreement that included limited counties with GeoPay. Um, as I mentioned, recruitment and retention suffers. Other environmental scientist staff who have left have also um, decided to take jobs in regions with cheaper housing so they can afford to save for and buy a house. High rates of turnover lead to loss of institutional knowledge and vacancies have been open longer since staff either have to have local ties or be able to afford to move or to live here. Um, staff can also look for cheaper housing in surrounding communities, but this can lead to a bigger burden on a commute. Um, it's also harder to save for retirement and spending such a high percentage of our salary on rent makes it challenging to save for home or to purchase a larger home to accommodate a growing and changing family. Altogether, this makes state service not an attractive choice for people with highly specialized skills in our areas. Next slide. In the absence of a comprehensive solution to geographic pay, many environmental scientists have to find ways to fill the gap between their salary and the cost of living. Kat and I both know environmental scientists who live with roommates, rely on family contributions, or have to get a second job in order to afford to live in the area where they are working for the state. Some may transfer out of their current position in order to be able to relocate to an area with a lower cost of living or leave state service entirely for um, jobs that pay better in the federal or private sector. Next slide, please. We hope our presentation has highlighted the importance of implementing geographic pay. As Kat mentioned, the tentative agreement provided to CAPS membership last fall was limited to a select group of San Francisco Bay Area counties. And clearly state scientists in other areas are also facing high costs of living. 
a broader geographic pay proposal is needed to equitably address those concerns. And with that, we will turn it back over to Bianca.